John, if I could ask you about the NORAD intercept yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, if, if you could help us understand, there was a period of time yesterday where it wasn't clear what was going on. We, we think we have a sense of what happened, a tragic incident. But can you walk us through, maybe give us a TikTok of NSC involvement in, in this? And was there a point at which yesterday the Commander-in-Chief was informed that there was a wayward plane headed for Washington and might have he... Well, the President was certainly uh, briefed and informed. Um, I don't have like the, I, w I should have brought it with me. I don't have like an exact TikTok minute by minute, but I can walk you through a little bit of, of how it transpired in the process. So before I do that though, I, I do want to express our deepest condolences uh, to the family members, the loved ones of those uh, who died in that crash. Uh, just, just terrible, terrible news. Nobody wants to get that. And we need to keep them front and center uh, as we talk about this. But. Um, this is part of, you might remember after 9-11, uh, Operation Noble Eagle was stood up. Um, and it's, a, uh, it's an organized operational way of policing airspace, particularly sensitive airspace over the United States in the wake of 9-11. Um, and so um, there are, um, there are uh, Noble Eagle-like incidents that happen from time to time where private aircraft wander into secure airspace uh, and we have to notify them to, to leave. And 99 times out of 100, that's all it takes is a quick call on the radio, hey, you're, 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 you're getting into some airspace you don't, you don't need to be in and, and usually that takes care of it. Uh, but under this process, if uh, an aircraft, if a pilot is non-responsive to those requests and continues on course and speed and altitude to enter restricted airspace, then there are under NORAD's authorities, there are uh, the, the responsibilities to put aircraft up to, to again, send the message and, 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 get, and get a different outcome. And that's what happened here. Six F-16s from three different air bases on the East Coast, uh, certainly uh, Joint Base Andrews was one of those three, uh, launched, uh, la launched into the air, six F-16s, three air bases, launched uh, to intercept this particular Cessna cit citation. As I understand it, the, the two from Andrews were the first ones to reach the Cessna. And they had to, they had to turn on the speed to get to them, which is why people here in the district uh, area heard a sonic boom. The, they had to break the sound barrier to get up the speed to get to, get to, the, uh, to the aircraft in question. Uh, when they did, they, uh, they did exactly what they were supposed to do, try to get on the radio, communicate to the, to, the, to the pilot. That wasn't working, made themselves visible. That didn't work. Um, and tragically, it ended, uh, obviously, uh, in, in the crash and the, and the death of all on board. Um, but throughout that process, um, th there's a conference call that's set up when you have a noble legal incident. Uh, where NORAD's on the phone, DOD's on the phone, NSC was on, uh, on the phone, uh, uh, in real time monitoring it and getting real time uh, updates from the pilots, uh, in this case these two F-16 uh, pilots, um, and so that, so that everybody's in the loop literally in real time. And that's what happened yesterday. And again, at the appropriate time, the President was, was briefed and kept informed. Was he informed while he was at JBA or did, was it happening? I honestly don't know the exact moment at which the, the President was informed, but he was briefed on, on the incident. Okay, John.